We just got back from Amsterdam uh, for our hair transplant meeting and learned a lot of stuff. I wanted to share with you one thing that I thought was really interesting. It's, it, there was a video that I shot on understanding how Propecia works. And Propecia, the brand name for finasteride, which is a DHT blocker. And in this, in this video, I talked about how we go from terminal hairs, which are thick hairs in, in youth, and with male pattern baldness becomes thinner hairs, which are called vellus hairs or baby hairs, and that eventually disappears. And so that's the usual progression of male pattern baldness. The idea that we've always believed in is that finasteride or Propecia works to reconvert a lot of these baby vellus hairs back into thicker terminal hairs, and that was our mechanism that we thought worked. Some of the more recent uh, studies are uh, quite interesting is instead of looking at static windows of time and saying, okay, here we have a lot of vellus hairs, all of a sudden we have a lot of thick hairs, and we are assuming the interval between the two is that all of a sudden they become converted back to terminal hairs, we're finding that may not exactly be the case. So for example, in a clinical setting, I'll see a patient, prescribe the finasteride, and then down the road I would see them back at six months and see that they've got you know, a lot of uh, thicker hairs and go, okay, well, these obviously have been converted. There was a, an individual at the meeting that did a very interesting study. What he did was he actually looked at interval, shaved hair and interval changes to that hair over time, and he found that over a period of time, the intervals that that were happening to the actual vellus hairs, where the vellus hairs were not actually changing. So our concept that vellus hairs that were being, being converted to terminal hairs may not be 100% accurate. The thought is that actually what it could do is that it can prolong our antigen hairs. So the hairs that are somewhat thin or wispy may not be the, the baby hairs, but they're just terminal hairs that are, are cycling through a much shorter antigen or growth phase. So what it's doing instead is actually prolongating or prolonging the interval phase for antigen, similar perhaps to what how Rogaine or uh, minoxidil works, but maybe I mean, a different net mechanism, obviously. But the idea is it's just sort of interesting that you know, this, this is more of a theoretical concern in my opinion. I don't think it's necessarily something that I would, you know, ask you to stop Propecia or start Propecia. It's, it's more uh, of a theoretical interest. I think a lot of people, especially men out there, are, are very interested in understanding some of the uh, mechanism by which something works. And I thought I would just share that with you. Is that the, you know, I always want to be careful when you get back from a meeting and trying to advocate uh, major, you know, clinical or theoretical changes, whether that in fact is accurate. Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously it's just one study. It's, it's an interesting study. It's something that I just wanted to share with you so you're up to date in uh, information in 2009. Well, I'm going to shoot a little addendum. I was just getting up and walking out of the room and uh, my assistant's uh, husband is actually on finasteride or Propecia and she said, what should we do? Should, we, should, I, should he stop taking it? And I just want to make sure that you understand that if this individual who works with me on hair has that question, you may have that question as well. This video is not intended for you to change your clinical uh, use of uh, finasteride or Propecia one way or the other to start or to stop it. This is just meant to be an academic, professorial, interesting uh, video to explain to you what some of the mechanism of action is working. For example, we had a, when I was in Amsterdam, we, they talked about how does Rogaine work, minoxidil work? Is it a potassium channel opener? Is it a prolongation of antigen? What is it? It doesn't really matter. If it's working, it's working and it's safe. So my, my point I just want to uh, bring across to you, this is more of an academic video just for you to be uh, aware of some of the current studies and thinking of how, think, how medicines work. But whatever the course of action, it's a safe medication for you and it works and if it's working for you, this is not meant for you to start or stop the medication. It's meant for you just to understand more about how, pr the proposed mechanism of action just so you'd be a little bit more educated.